In this video, I wanted to talk about Devin Lurt's training and the buildup for the Levon Saganishvili match. Now, of course, Devin did not get the result that he was hoping for, so a lot of people have been saying that his training was not super effective, that he should have trained in a different way, and maybe a way more similar to the way that Levon Saganishvili trains, or to the way that Ermis Gasparini or Denis Saplinkov trains. People have always complained that Devin doesn't really have enough bicep training, that he doesn't do enough kind of baseline strength training like bench press and weighted pull-ups or lat pull-downs, all of the more traditional kind of lifting. And a lot of people have said that this kind of unorthodox style of training, where Devin is super specialized and doesn't really train the major muscle groups, is probably part of what led to his loss against Levon. However, I do think that Devin's training actually worked super, super well. And that's what I want to talk about in this video. I'm not saying that I think his training was perfect, but I think that it did exactly what it was intended to do. I think that part of the goal of Devin's training was to intentionally create a bias toward his hand and wrist. Every single time that he was doing an arm-driven movement, like a back pressure style of lift, he was always doing it through pronation or through wrist rise. He never did any kind of isolated bicep movement. So he was constantly training his bicep throughout this period, but he was always doing it through the hand. This could be compared to something like a deadlift, where the goal is to compete in a federation in which you are not allowed to use straps. Even if you can deadlift 700 pounds with straps, but you can only deadlift 600 pounds without straps, the 700 pound deadlift doesn't really do anything for you. You can only put as much baseline power into that bar that your hand can withstand. And I think this is essentially the training style or the training theory that Devin was trying to implement. His arm or his back or his legs are only as strong as his hand is. So in other words, you're only as strong as your weakest link in the chain. And what is pretty crazy is that Devin did manage to crack Levon's wrist back during this match in round one. So I think that his pronation, his wrist rise really, really held up super well in this match and proved to be incredibly strong. However, I do agree that there is an issue with Devin's training style. And I do think that this issue also was exposed in the match. While the hand and wrist is super important in arm wrestling, I think that you cannot forget your arm. You cannot neglect training your arm in isolation. And essentially what we saw in this match in round one is that Devin's pronation was strong enough to take hand control from Levon. However, even though he ends up taking full hand control, even from kind of an awkward dumped underneath position, Levon's arm power was still strong enough to open Devin's bicep. Normally, once you gain full hand control in a match, your elbow flexor will be strong enough to prevent your opponent from dragging the match to their side of the table underneath your own arm. However, Devin's elbow flexor was not strong enough to do this. And I think that this may have been because, as far as we know, Devin never maxed out his elbow flexor. Now, of course, he was training his elbow flexor, but because of the fact that he was training it through pronation and through wrist rise, he never isolated his elbow flexor. So the heaviest weight Devin ever lifted on his elbow flexor throughout his entire training period was the exact same weight he lifted on his pronation lift, which was just under 75 kilograms or 165 pounds. Now 75 kilograms is still a lot to lift with your elbow flexor. However, if we compare this to the other guys in the super heavyweight category, it's significantly lower. Hermes Gasparini, for example, managed to lift 92 kilograms in an isolated elbow flexor movement, and I think that we really saw this difference in approach demonstrated on the table. In Hermes Gasparini, we had someone that even though his hand control was really questionable against Levon, he was still managing to get a stop solely through his arm power. And then on the other side, we have Devin Larratt, who actually managed to take hand control in round one, but despite having hand control, could not challenge Levon Saganishvili's arm. So it's kind of the opposite result from both guys. So the point of all of this is to say that I think both Ermes and Devin, even though they kind of have opposing styles of training, I think that both of their training styles were super effective, but in different areas. I think that Devin's pronation lift and his rise lift actually worked perfectly. I think that they did exactly what they should have done, and that is that they made Devin's pronation and his wrist rise super, super strong. The issue is, Devin never had a similar lift to where he was nearly maxing out his elbow flexor. And we saw the result of that was that Devin's elbow flexor seemed to be exposed in that match. After round one, his elbow flexor was getting ripped through. Even though Levon didn't even really have full hand control in any of the rounds, you could see that Devin's elbow flexor was just being opened up the whole time. 
So what could Devin do to change this? And my idea on this is that Devin could essentially keep his training identical to the way it is now. However, if he simply added one lift, and that would be an isometric elbow flexor lift, very similar to the one that Ermi's Gasparini trains, or you could even do it off the floor where your arm angle is at 90 degrees and your forearm is parallel to the ground and you simply budge the weight, I think that this could be extremely beneficial to Devin's style. If Devin implemented an exercise like this, he would not only be training his pronation very hard and his wrist rise very hard, but then he would also be training his elbow flexor extremely hard as well. I think at the moment, Devin kind of has an imbalance that is skewed toward the side of his hand and wrist, and if he brings his arm up a little bit to balance that out to match that, I think that would yield huge results. So to wrap up, I think that Devin's pronation and riser lift worked perfectly, and they did their job exactly the way they were intended to. I just think that probably you also need to be training your elbow flexor in an isolated manner. But let me know what you guys think about all this, because of course, Devin knows how to train probably just about as well as anyone, and I'm sure that there was a reason he wasn't isolating his elbow flexor during this process. But I'll be super interested to see if Devin makes minor adjustments to his training after losing to Levon, or if he just continues to implement the exact same style.